So that's why the after party is my one marvelous scene. Now go find the other ones. Tons of some of the best creators on YouTube all made videos talking about an interesting scene in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And once you're done with those, make your own. What scene do you think is interesting? Once you make one, tweet it to me at Nando V Movies, and I'll put it on our playlist. All right, I'll do that. How many of these things are there anyway? 176? Jesus. Okay, I'm kind of late to this. Well, when was that? When was this published? April of 2019. Okay, so right before it, Endgame came out. Okay. Um. Well, it's alright. I know exactly what I'm gonna do mine on. I'm gonna do mine on Infinity War and Endgame. Nope. Okay. Um. How about Captain America: Civil War? Nope. All right. Um. Okay, I have to do it on my favorite movie of all time. Captain America, the winners. Okay. Um, okay. Not as many people have seen the Netflix shows. What if I do mine on Daredevil? God Language. damn it. Okay, I, go th I went through the entire list and I tallied up which movies and TV shows have been covered and which haven't. And props to the people that did videos on Agent Carter and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So now this is the list of things that haven't been covered. Um, oh, there's a pretty obvious one, and it's looking at me right in the face, and it is Runaways. Runaways is a Hulu original series based off of the Marvel comic book series of the same name, and yes, it is set in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. There are three seasons of this show, and it ran from 2017 to 2019, and even featured a cro crossover episode with Cloak and Dagger. In my hour and a half long ranking of every property in the MCU, I ranked Runaways Season 3 at 38th, Season 1 at 19th, and Season 2 at 18th. Season 1 and Season 2 are so good in my opinion that they, out that they outranked titles like Doctor Strange and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, but you should totally watch my video to understand that reasoning. Now the scene that I will be talking about today takes place in Season 1, but before we get into that, I'm assuming... Most of you will either need a recap of what happened in Season 1, or in most people's case, a summary of what the show is in the first place, as there are not many people who have actually seen this show. Runaways follows a group of teenagers, who all have parents who are a member of Pride, which is a religious-based charity organization. Now, the kids are all great friends in their childhoods, but now they don't talk to each other anymore in high school, because they all go their separate ways, which is something that is painfully too realistic. One night when the kids are actually brought together by Alex Wilder, who is sort of the leader of the group, they discover that their parents are secretly in a cult and looking to resurrect an evil deity, which I won't get into in case you actually want to watch this show because of spoilers. Basically, for the sake of this video, all you have to know is that the kids find out that their parents are evil and they have to put a stop to their plans before the parents find out that they know. Now, all the kids that were introduced to in the beginning of the series come off as pretty stereotypical teenagers, which initially I did not like. Alex Wilder is the nerdy tech savvy kid, Chase is a jock, Nico is goth, Carolina is the pretty religious girl, Gert is the activist one, and Molly is the one that's there for diversity. Basically take any high school textbook from the early 2000s and you can find the cast of Runaways. However, and this is a big however, throughout the course of the show we get to dive more into the characters and learn more about them as people. They become less and less like stereotypical characters and more like actual people. Chase is the jock, but he's not stupid like most TV show jocks. He's a genius and arguably the smartest one of the group. Nico is only goth due to her sister's death. Carolina is only religious because that's how she was raised. And Gert and Molly develop superpowers in the show that change their character arcs completely. Alex goes from a video game nerd to waving around a gun ready to kill people and get what he wants. In a lot of these ways, these kids are very relatable. They don't have any idea what to do when they find out their parents are evil. One of the first things they do is the most logical. They go to the police, but then they realize that Pride is in control of the cops of Los Angeles. Some of the characters get like C-level superhero powers in this show, and how they handle their powers is also super relatable. They overuse their powers. Molly, who may or may not be the first mutant in the MCU, has super strength. She overuses her powers though and results in her getting very tired after she uses her powers. Nico, she steals her mother's staff of one, which is a hugely important artifact from the comics that may have came from the Sanctum Sanctorum from Doctor Strange, but unlike Doctor Strange, Nico has no idea how to use magic, 
for the most part in the MCU and barely knows how to use her powers. Carolina, she glows and can shoot like sparkles out of her hand. Jeez, that, that was, I didn't hear anything, but uh, weren't those like sparkles out of your fingers, like lightning maybe? But she also doesn't understand her powers and where they came from. As mentioned earlier, Chase is the super genius of the group, so he engineers these high-tech gloves that shoot out lasers and names it exactly what a high school kid would name such a thing. The Fistagons. The first half of season one has the kids trying to figure out what to do about their parents. We eventually discover that Alex's father was once a criminal in the streets of LA, and long story short, there is a secondary villain by the name of Darius, who was a former gangster with Alex's father. Now the runaways cross path with Darius several times before the fifth episode, where they all converge and stand up, which is where my one marvelous scene starts. This scene starts with Alex being taken hostage by Darius and driven away in his car, and the rest of the runaways have to go and rescue him. The kids have absolutely no plan going into this confrontation, and all they want is to get their friend back. They pull up in a car, and Nico gets out with the staff of one, and she tries to use its magic to shut down the car's engine that Alex is in, but it doesn't work. Now at this point in the series, none of the kids know that the other members of the group have superpowers. So it comes to a shock when Molly, the youngest of the group, gets out of the car and lifts up the back of the car that Alex is in. She lifts up the back wheels, causing the car to not be able to move, and Darius to get out. Darius and his henchmen come out confused, as watching a 13-year-old girl lift up a car is not something they see every day. Carolina then gets out and then uses her powers to cause a diversion while Alex runs back to his friends. Chase, who is now just entering the scene, pulls up in a car and then gets out and blasts Darius with the fistigons. Once Darius gets up, he opens fire on the kids with two pistols, but then Nico uses the staff of one and does this. Protect us! It is at this point in the show that most of the kids realize that they have some form of superpower, and they use it to get Alex back from Darius. Now this is not as a heroic as a scene as any of the Avengers team up shots, but it still serves for a win as the kids, as this was the time that they all truly used their powers for the first time. Now this may sound weird, but this scene reminds me of Spider-Man Homecoming. Spider-Man Homecoming is a movie about a hero trying to do what is right, however, he lacks experience and he simply is just a kid within the grand scheme of the superhero world. Now the kids in Runaways don't have any superhero experience just like Peter Parker. All they want to do is put a stop to their parents and use their superpowers for good. But they suck at this. And they're not the hero type right off the bat. Nobody is. I think a detail that really drives home this point is how Chase enters the scene. Look how stupid he looks when he runs into the shot and to shoot the fistigons. He clearly has never done this on another person before. He doesn't look like a superhero charging into battle like Captain America or Thor. He looks like a kid that's just trying to protect his friend. The dialogue in this scene is also fitting. Right in the middle of the battle, Molly asks Carolina, he has superpowers too. The both of them are in shock and converse with each other despite there literally being a group of people that could shoot them at any moment. This scene shows how inexperienced the group is as a whole but also serves as a cool team-up shot. Now again, it's not as badass and cool as these ones, but it is not trying to be, and that's why I love this show. Runaways is a great show in my opinion. I mentioned in my MCU rankings that I think this show is basically the MCU's version of The Flash and Arrow. I say that because the show is good, but it also can get very corny, but I think that the corniness of the show is true to the characters. They're all high school students, which is where we are all very corny and cringeworthy. If you have Hulu and you have the time to check out Runaways, do it. It's a good show, but don't go into it expecting like a daredevil. It's not as serious as Daredevil and more laid back. And I hope shedding some light on this show gets it the more recognition that it deserves. And for me, the Protect Us scene is my pick for my one marvelous scene. Thank you all for watching. For those of you that are new, 
My channel is mainly divided up into three segments, movies, more specifically the MCU, video games, more specifically Nintendo games, and hockey, more specifically the Pittsburgh Penguins. So if you're interested in any of those things, be sure to subscribe. I'm trying to post a video at least once a week, but if you don't like my opinions, then you don't have to subscribe, and it's too bad because they are my Owen opinions.